Hey, Edith. Christy? A doctor recently told me I had become quite forgetful. Oh, how long have you had this problem? Which problem? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners from Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening has gotten very popular. And we've noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips. A fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. Edith. Hey, Christy. Do you know what my husband says every time I say I'm hot? What? It, what? Don't brag. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot out, isn't it? Oh, Christy, 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 300, let me see. I can't even think. It's been 100 degrees for three days. It is misery. And our friends out in Utah, it has been 110, 111. And, and you know, in Colorado, not everybody has air conditioning, and I'm one of those people that doesn't have, and so are you. And so am I, but fortunately, we're in the pod basement, where it is nice and cool down here. Yes, it is. I wanted to say that, you know how we love to pick a day and say what is the significance? Uh-huh. Did you know that June 23rd is National Porridge Day and National Typewriter Day? That's cool. Well, it is. It's like national things that no longer have relevance day. <laughs> That's right. You know? <laughs> I remember being taught how to type on a typewriter. Oh, me too. Me too. I mean, I loved my typewriter. But uh, porridge, nobody even uses that word unless you're, what's her name? Goldilocks. Goldilocks. Yes. Yeah. What are we talking about today, Edith? Well, we're talking about things that we forgot to tell everybody. I'm excited about this week's episode about the top things we forgot to tell you because after every episode, there's always a little something where we just go, oh, shoot, I forgot to mention this or I didn't mm -hmm. say that. And, mm -hmm. and now we get a chance to sort of rewind a little bit and yes. say a bunch of like, it's a potpourri episode. It's definitely a potpourri episode. And, um, you know, maybe if we had like scripts and stuff, this wouldn't happen. But I prefer it this way, honestly, to to talk without a script, just an outline, and then see what happens. Exactly right, yes. That's what we're and doing. And of course, if we run out of time, we run out of time. Right. So we don't know how many things we're going to get in today, but hopefully we'll get in a lot of information about things we forgot to tell you. And if not, we'll have a leftovers episode. Yay. Yeah. Hey, let's do a shout out for one of our garden party members. Oh, let's do, go ahead. This is a shout out to... Hey. <laughs> See, I'm shouting out. I got it. I got it. <laughs> this is a shout out to Mary M., who is a member of our garden party. She is a lawn chair lettuce, which means that she throws us a couple bucks each month to support the work we do. She gets some seeds from our garden. Mm -hmm. And Mary, of course, is super extra special because she also happens to be my neighbor. And I know her, and she's wonderful. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Folks, if you want to become a member of the Garden Party, just click on the show notes below or go to our website at UpsideDownTulips.com and you can learn how to become a member of the Garden Party, a patron, a supporter of Upside Down Tulips, and you'll get some fun rewards like seeds that are come from our gardens or some fun merch like a coffee cup or a t-shirt. All kinds of things. Who doesn't like rewards? <laughs> I love rewards. <laughs> hey, Edith, how's your garden going? Oh, Christy. You know, things that love the heat are doing really well. And so I don't. So look at me. I don't look like I'm doing well at we, all. We both look I like know. a mess today, don't we? Oh. Our hair is up. Oh, we're, everything. We're, we're only wearing the barest amount of clothing. I'm like literally to... a sweat slick is what <laughs> I think of myself hey, as. Hey, you know what we should do? You know how our one-year anniversary is coming up and sure. we talked about doing a drunk show? Yeah, you, you slammed that shut, that door <laughs> shut. Well, you know what we could do instead? What? We could do it in ice baths if it's still this hot. In ice baths? Yes. In water around electrical equipment. <laughs> really? Oh. Ooh, really, I didn't, I, didn't think, I, I didn't think these things through more. I had an idea how we could do you, you turn You turn down my drunk idea. You turn down my other idea. What was my other idea? Pros. 
that we had to do it in verse, yes. not prose, oh, in yeah. verse. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my, my next idea is let's do it in bad accents that constantly change. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be fun. Oh, yeah, it'd be a lot of fun, don't you know? Oh, I think it would be, yes. Yes. We, oui, we. Oui. <laughs> this would be very much fun. I wouldn't have to work very hard on that one. That one would be easy. Yeah, that actually would be fun. Yeah. So I'm just going to wait for you to say yes or no okay. to that. Anyway, back to your garden. My garden. Do you know what's thriving when I say things that love the heat? My roses are thriving. And I want to thank you for that because for the first time, I pruned them at the right time of year. Mm. Thanks to you, Aww. our roses episode. My roses are unbelievable now. That's great. I it just, is a good rose year for me too. Yeah, if you don't prune them, at, if you prune them at the wrong time, you kind of kill the flowers, interestingly enough. <laughs> right, yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And don't forget to feed them too, Edith. That's right, that's right. I have to do that. I have yeah. to do that. As soon as I'm less hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. Um, my onions, corn, and squash are doing good. Oh, good. Because they like the heat. Yeah. It is too hot for the spinach, cilantro, lettuce. Yeah. I have had that lettuce covered for, I think, five solid days. It hasn't seen the sun. I have a frost blanket, one of those white ones. Uh Uh-huh. And they're under there, and they're doing okay. And this is your 100 heads of lettuce that have self-sowed in your garden. I've been throwing them at passing cars. I like it's like their <laughs> zucchini. I swear, like a vaudeville act. Yes. So I've also been taking. You know how some of the stuff that doesn't like the heat are starting to form seeds. Mm-hmm. So I've been going around and pinching them off. <gasps> Remember last week I told you one of my cabbages was going to seed. Yes, Christy, I pinched off the forming seeds, uh-huh. and it has doubled in size. Oh, that's good. Maybe that worked. How's your broccoli? Do you have broccoli, Edith? Broccoli's okay. It's still little, but it's okay. See, I think my broccoli, which is has little, has, you know, starting to form little baby broccoli mm-hmm. heads, mm-hmm. it looks like it's going to seed. How tall is it? A couple inches. Mine too. Well, it's possible. You I can... should put my lawn chair over it. Yeah. Or it might be too late. It's never too late. Look at it that way. Even if it is, pretend it isn't. <laughs> okay. Live okay. in denial. Live in total denial. It's the only way to live. Okay, um, I water my container plants twice a day. Twice a day. I have to. You go out there and they Mm. look like they're gasping. Oh, some of my weeds are going to seed. Folks, do not Mm -hmm. let your weeds go to seed. See, we're doing verse as though it was our anniversary. Um, It's what you need. It's because it's what you need. Don't make it bleed. Okay, (laughs) um, (laughs) there's... I think this weed is called a fillery. It kind, you know what it looks like. It looks like the kind of little neck thing that Ruth Ginsburg used to wear uh-huh. in a circle, and it's going to seed. So I spent a lot of time pulling that out. Um, and I had a shock right before I came over here. I was going through the garden, and I thought I had the best looking cucumber plants that I've ever had, and I have like five of them. I don't think they're cucumbers. <laughs> I think they're spaghetti squash, oh, which means no. I have six spaghetti squash. I have a gun. I can't abide that. That yeah. will take over my house and yes. the alley. Well, remember when I told you that I had 10 spaghetti squash in my garage? Yes. And then it all went bad uh-huh. because I didn't do anything with it? Mm-hmm. Similar to when I put tomatoes in the attic. I have a problem with this type of thing. Mm-hmm. So then all the spaghetti squash went in the compost bin. Uh oh, oh, oh. So right now there are five. I have five spaghetti squash growing in a compost bin. Wow. So, well, we're, we're destined to have spaghetti squash again this we year. We are destined to have a lot of them. And, you know, I don't know, is it too late to put cucumber? I'm going to I'm gonna grow more cucumber. I'm going to put more seeds out. Yeah, I would. Because I love what, cucumber. Yeah, what's the worst I, that could happen? They, they'll probably germinate really quick. Mm-hmm, You'll probably yeah. put that seed in there. It'll go, bing, hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before I even turn around. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> So anyway, that that is that's my garden, just trying to keep it alive in this heat, which is shocking because it's not even summer. How about your garden, Christy? Well, I am doing a very interesting tomato experiment. So this year I bought my tomato plants from a nursery and I bought all hybrid tomatoes to help 
tamp down a fungus. Mm -hmm. And some of the, usually when I buy a tomato plant, I like to buy a good hefty size. So it'll be in one of those, I don't know, is that like one of those four inch containers? Mm -hmm. And they're maybe, they're like $12 a piece. So I'm spending, you know, if I'm buying tomato plants, I can mm-hmm. that can add up pretty quick. So this year I thought I'd be a little bit more economical, and, I, and so I bought two that were of the four inch pot size, and then I bought a bunch that were maybe the 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 three, the two or three inch size. Yeah. And I thought, let's see what happens. And I went out there to see if I could tell which tomato plant was the larger one and which uh-huh. one was the smaller one that I got for maybe like five bucks. Uh huh. And I can't tell the difference. They all catch up, don't they? They all they caught, caught up. up. They're all, they all have flowers on them, which makes me very happy. And they're all, I, I put them all in cages. So they look all pretty good. Okay, can I just uh, put in here that I also use the wall of water on a couple of my tomatoes. You know, oh, with that, that where yeah. you fill it with water and when it's cold, it's yeah. supposed to make them uh, grow faster. And you're doing that now? No, I took them off. Oh, I've had them okay, on gosh, okay. since, 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 you know, okay. April or whatever. Uh, Christy, everything is the same. They all caught up. Isn't that weird? Isn't that something? Yeah. yeah. So that's good to know. Yeah, save your save your money and buy some of those smaller tomato plants. Don't yeah. feel like you have to get a big one. Yeah. I saw a hummingbird moth this week. In fact, many hummingbird moths. Okay. Put it up on the, our Facebook page. Have you ever seen one, Ida? I don't think I have. It doesn't sound familiar. It looks like a little bird or a giant bee. And it is the strangest little moth you will ever see. And folks, you can go on our Facebook page and check it out because I took a little video of it. Is that the one that flew and hit me in the eye all those years ago? I was not there, so I do not know. I bet it is. I bet it is. I hate those things. It's called a hummingbird moth. They're so interesting. Yeah, and it flew right in my eyeball. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a lot of weeding this week, Edith, and mm-hmm. I just tell you, I love that weeder you gave me. It has a handle, and it just has this piece of metal with a little, like a little uh, snake's it's a, tongue. Like a forked? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a little snake tongue, Simplest and it thing just in the gets world. in there. So simple. Boy, no, that's none a of good the, weeder. You know, so the fancy stuff they sell, not necessary. It's, it works really great. I was weeding, 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 and I'm getting everything all nicely weeded. And then I looked back at my... A summer squash, and I realized, oh my gosh, how did I forget that weed there? And I went and I pulled it. Did, uh-oh. Did you pull your summer squash? No. What'd you pull? I pulled my one pea. <laughs> <laughs> my one stupid oh, pea no. plant that germinated and was surviving and maybe it was like four inches long. Oh. I pulled it. I tried it like, and of course I put it back in. Like, oh my gosh, oh no. And I went quick, try to put it back in and I watered it and nothing happened. Look, look at it this way. You put it out of its misery. It was leading a very lonely life. Okay, well good. That's good. Okay. So then I kept weeding some more. I was in the flower bed and I'm pulling out uh, morning glories that were just getting out of hand. I'm pulling and I'm pulling and I'm pulling. And I pulled out one of my scarlet runner beans. Oh, oh, that's... And then I went, Krista, you need to stop weeding. Yeah. Because I was just... So, you know, you just get that weeding mindset. Mm-hmm. I had to stop. But fortunately, I have about 20 scarlet runner beans that are doing great. So I guess I could give one up for that. Um, so remember when we, ta- when we were talking in our perennial vegetable episode about horseradish and where to plant it and mm-hmm. what not to plant around it? Mm-hmm. I do. And um, I asked you, what about strawberries? Is it okay to plant strawberries around it? And, and you I, said... No, I don't think so. That's what I read. And then my response was, uh-oh. So here's an experiment for us. I have some strawberries. My strawberries are all coming up. I'm getting maybe... I got about a good three cups today, a couple cups yesterday. They're coming up really nice. And I have pulled two strawberries that were right by the horseradish plant. Mm-hmm. Should we taste it and see what it tastes like? Yes. There's strawberries in the room. What a nice looking strawberry. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Does it taste like horseradish? I want roast beef. <laughs> <laughs> that, does it taste okay? It's delicious. It's mm-hmm. a, this is a tart strawberry, though. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Okay, well, there's the answer to that. Yeah, don't believe everything you read. Well, folks, if you ever hear words or terms that you're not familiar with mm-hmm. or you want a good laugh check out the Upside Down Dictionary on our website at UpsideDownTulips.com. It has nothing to do with Webstermerium. It is an Edith Christie dictionary, <laughs> nice. right? Uh-huh. 
Or you can click on the link in our show notes. We have blog posts there and everything. And while you're there, you can sign up for our newsletter for updates, jokes, and funny garden signs. Do you want pictures of our gardens, inspirations, gardening jokes? You can visit us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Hey, you know what, Edith? We should put pictures of our roses up there this week. Okay, let's do. That's a good idea. Good, and then good idea. Check that. Check out the hummingbird moth, folks, on our Facebook page. It's really I'll, cool. I'll look at it. Okay. And don't forget, we've got a YouTube channel. Do we? I forgot. Goodbye, Cinderella. We're going to the prince's ball, and you're not. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Have fun. I wish I could go to the ball, but I have nothing to wear. I wish I had a fairy godmother. What is happening? Who are you? The gardeners of the galaxy have heard your cry for help, and here we are. The gardeners of the... What? Who? Didn't you call for a fairy god watcher? I called for a fairy god mother. Where is Root? Who? Root? Root! I am Root. I don't really see how a Root can help me. What do you need, Cindy? I need clothes to go to the ball. New clothes? Easy peasy. These are overalls? I can't go to the prince's ball in overalls. I am Root. Huh? Root means you need more. A straw sun hat? Not sure if that's what I needed. I mean, it's night and we'll be inside. I am Root. Huh? Oh, you're so right, Root. She needs shoes. Now she's ready. Well, except these are garden clogs. Not really good for dancing, probably. Plus, they're huge. I, I just wanted to meet and maybe marry the prince. I can't go like this. Listen up, Cinderella. Here's some advice from the gardeners of the galaxy. Grow a spine and then grow a garden. You'll be much better off. Come on, Root. There is an emergency garden situation in Mississippi. I'm Root. Let's go. Goodbye, Cinderella. Wait, don't go. They're gone. Oh, I want my old clothes back. The stepsisters are going to make so much fun of my overalls. Wait, what's this? Seeds. What the heck am I supposed to do with seeds? I just wanted to go to the ball. And I'm not any better off at all. Oh, mm, oh. Does Cinderella keep on whimpering? Mm. How is she going to meet the prince? And when is Root's voice going to change? Join us next time for Goodbye, Cinderella. No. You know, Edith, I just love it when you take a fairy tale and put a modern twist on it. Oh, thanks, Christy. I, l I love doing that, too. And... I love putting gardening twists on everything. Oh, yes. It's a that very is... wonderful metaphor for everything, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Well, we'll find out in a little bit what happened to Cinderella. Yeah. And right now we're going to talk about some of the things that we forgot to tell you in the last 45 episodes. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Some of this stuff I figured I, I didn't know. For example, on every seed packet almost it says... Plant in well-drained soil, right? And it occurred to me, I don't know what that means. Do I have well-drained soil? And if not, how can I get it? Oh, that's a really good point. Isn't that a good point? So, thank you, by the way. You're so supportive. So, <laughs> <laughs> you are, and I'm not, and I kick myself. Okay. So You oh, are too supportive, Edith. Oh, thank you. You are so supportive. Sometimes so silently you that, are. that you, you are people, supportive. do you hear her? She's being supportive of me not being supportive. <laughs> She's unbelievable. Okay, back to well-drained soils. Soils that drain well have enough space between their particles, Christy, to allow water and oxygen to flow freely. Because mm. if you don't do that, the water will never get down there, and mm -hmm. the oxygen won't, and your plants will die. Um. Examples of soil that doesn't drain well, 
clay and silty soils. Which sounds like what I have and a lot of people in Colorado mm-hmm. have. Sandy soil drains too fast. Mm. Um, good soil that has been compacted, like if if there's a path that you walk on all the time or, you know, where, where kids play in a field, mm-hmm. that's going to be compacted and that's not going to be good. For, for for making a garden out of because it's, it can't the water can't get there. If you have a low spot in your yard that where there's nowhere for the excess water to go, like Christy, I planted my onions behind the garage right by the gutter, and some of them rotted because it oh. was not well drained. Yeah, remember when we had all that rain in May? Yes, so they rotted because of that. It's runoff from the roof. If you have a hard pan or a ledge beneath the surface, you know it could be rocks. Okay, gotcha. It could be a, the substrata of soil that is clay and really compacted and somebody's taking care of the topsoil. I have a test for how you can test if you have well-drained soil. You dig a hole roughly 12 by 12. Inches, not feet. We're not digging, you know, a grave. Okay. And you fill it with water. As I usually do. Go ahead. Fill it with water or dig graves back there? What? You know. Okay. <laughs> Don't go there. Okay. <laughs> Once the water has drained out, you fill it again. And this time, stick a ruler in to measure how deep the water is. Now, here comes some math. Are you ready for the math? After 15 minutes, check the depth to see how much it has dropped. Multiply the difference by four to see how fast it will drain in an hour. Oh. One to six inches Per hour, draining out of the hole means that your soil is well-drained. Congratulations! Less than one inch per hour is considered wet, and if it drains faster than six inches, it is dry. So, Christy, how do you make it well-drained? How do you? Compost. Oh, of course. Our answer for almost everything. Everything, everything, right? Put organic organic matter in there. Porous, make it porous, and there you have it. Wonderful. That was good info, huh? It was very good. It was so good. Thank you. And um, how about you go now? I said supportively in a very loving manner. One of the things I forgot to tell folks was just last week in episode 45 when we talked about fertilizers. Mm -hmm, I didn't have to go back very far. You don't need a different type of fertilizer for every single type of plant, even though manufacturers may do that. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like your cleaning supplies and Mm -hmm. how they make special cleaning supplies for your bathroom and for your kitchen. And really, you can just use the same one. Or if they'd have like elbow soap. Right. Who needs elbow soap? I got my big toe soap. Exactly. (laughs) Right. Um, A general 10-10-10 is fine. And again, folks, that stands for nitrogen. um, Potassium. And phosphate. Mm -hmm. And most gardeners should just use a complete fertilizer with twice as much phosphorus as nitrogen or potassium. So an example would be a 10-20-10 or 12-24-12. This is also true for your lawn. Like they have lawn fertilizer that's good for the spring and good for the fall. You know what? Just don't show your plants the bag and they won't know the difference. There you go. Um, what What about if mushrooms come up in your soil? Some people freak out about that. Well, actually, it's a good thing. I, I've heard that it's a good thing. It and we've never said thing. that. We forgot to tell people I don't that. Think we t- I don't think we did. Yeah. Or if we did, I forgot. <laughs> um, it's like a natural pesticide, number one. Number two, it shows that you've got all kinds of great microbes working. My sister Uta called me and said she's so happy she had dog vomit slime mold in her raised beds because it told her she was overwatering. And that's a mold we talked about, I think, in episode three. Mm-hmm. Because we love the name, basically, and we're like eight-year-old <laughs> right. boys. <laughs> exactly. Um, did you ever have a mushroom in your house plants? No. Mushrooms can be harmful to cats and dogs. And what I found humorous was it didn't mention children. <laughs> <laughs> so don't don't freak out about the mushrooms, folks. Another gardening tip I forgot to mention to folks was in episode 44 just a couple weeks ago when we were talking about all the things you should do during the month of June. And oh. Edith, I missed a big one. It's like you lost your mind around episode 41. Oh, I've got more. Okay. This one is 
pinch back your mums. So do you ever go to the grocery store and you buy yourself a potted mum or you buy one in the nursery and it's all full and fluffy and full of flowers? Yes. And then the next year you have it, it's this leggy mess. It's awful. That's because they have pinched back their mums. <gasps> so oh. in the garden, pinching is removing the growing tip of a plant using your thumb and your forefinger or you can use a pruners if you want to. Uh, many fall blooming perennials like chrysanthemums are pinched early in the season to prevent the plants from becoming tall and floppy and they will induce more flower buds. So pinch back mums and asters and you'll get more bloom later on. Christy, do, do you wait until you see the little bud for the coming flower? Way before the flower. Before the flower? Wait, once, Start by removing up to one-third of the plant when it reaches about six inches tall. Okay. And repeat the process every two to three weeks until the 4th of July. And then let the plant grow and set its flower buds. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to do that tomorrow with my asters. I did not know that. This is also true for some annuals um, like calendula, zinnia, petunia, geraniums, cosmos, marigolds, and of course, basil. The herb basil. Pinch your basil back so that it can become nice and bushy. Now, some annuals only grow on one stalk and should never be pinched back. And that would be like um, an annual poppy or celosia or balsam. That is wonderful, Christy. Wonderful news. It's good stuff. We got lots more coming up, folks. But until then, let's hear more from Cinderella. Let's see what happens. Cinderella. Yes, stepmother? So it's been weeks since the ball, and you're still wearing those awful overalls and those large things on your feet. What are they called now? They're garden clogs. And since the gardeners of the galaxy magically gave me these clothes, they're the only ones I have. That story again. The fairy godwater and a talking root. I'm afraid that jealousy and bitterness has softened your mind, Cinderella. There are no gardeners of the galaxy, and I forbid you to mention them ever again. Whatever. If you'll excuse me, where are you going? Into the garden. Ah, yes, to weep and whimper in private. I have neither wept nor whimpered in a while. Nor will I. I'm going to water the garden that grew from the seeds the fairy godfather gave me. I forbid you to go into the garden. Do you? Yes, I do. Come to think of it, I've not heard you cry over not going to the ball. Keeping it inside, is that what you're doing, Cinderella? What's going on here? What happened to the Cinderella that I have bullied into submission all these years? I've become a gardener. I'm growing things. And it is a powerful feeling. I forbid you to have a powerful feeling. Really? Okay, I admit it's hard to forbid someone to have a feeling. That salad we had for lunch? I grew it. You did not. I did too. Lettuce, radishes, and scallions. The cool weather vegetables. It was delicious. I've never tasted better. You know, Cinderella, I like this gardening thing you're doing. You may continue doing it. I will, but not here. I'm off to seek my destiny as a gardener. But no, you don't want to do that. Stay here. I'll buy you pretty dresses, let you go to balls, maybe you'll meet the prince, whatever you like. Just stay here and grow things for us. No, I don't care about dresses, princes, or prince's balls. Before I go, here. What's this? It's a watering can. Keep the garden watered, and you can have salad for weeks. But I don't know how to grow anything. If you make a mistake, the garden will forgive you. Unlike me. It'll take me a while to forgive you. Bye now. She's gone. Well, this sucks. Me watering? Don't be ridiculous. I do like that salad, though. Maybe I'll water just a little when no one's looking. Grow something. It helps you grow. Okay, Cinderella grew a spine. How about that? Go and grow a garden. Yay. Now, when you're growing a garden, maybe you're thinking, oh, I'm all alone. Who do I have besides upside-down tulips? You have a lot of help out there, folks. I've got a whole list of resources that people can go to all the time for gardeners, like the, every single state in the country has a university extension. 
And what that is, it's the agricultural arm, the learning about agriculture, and they will answer all your questions. They're public universities. They have to, right? So there's that. There's botanic gardens, local nursery, um, seed companies, and water companies. I went on, on to Denver Water, uh-huh. and they have information about xeriscaping, and they have uh, like gardens you can go visit to see if you want to xeriscape yours. They have examples in Denver Water. How cool is that? Lots of places to go to. Yeah. Not not as pretty and as funny as we are, but still good information. Really good. Really, really good, folks. Well, in episode 38, when we talked about containers, I forgot to mention about uh, an important part about when you're planting your containers and how to make them lighter. Because if you've got a big container and you fill it all the way up with soil and you water it, it's heavy. And, and expensive. And difficult to move. Uh, sometimes people think that it's good to add layers of gravel or rock or stone to the bottom of a container to help drainage. And actually, not only does it make it very heavy, but it also might contribute to your container plants being too wet. So what I use is I use packing peanuts. So for the first half of a, of a big container mm-hmm. plant, I fill it with packing peanuts. Christy. And it lightens the amount of space that you need and your plants are easy to carry around. Christy, that's the smartest thing I've ever heard in my life. Another thing you can use are plastic water bottles. Oh. They make pots lighter when you add your potting soil. So you fill it up halfway and you fill, fill it all in with a perlite or pumice that you can get at any big box store or your local nursery, and then fill the rest up with soil. Or you can also use a pot saucer to block the second half. So the saucer of a pot Mm. that's circular, Mm -hmm. that is a little, you know, of a certain width. So there's an air pocket on the bottom. So it'll block the Mm -hmm. bottom. Mm -hmm. And they also have things that you can buy called an upsidaisy. It's an insert that sets about halfway down into your container, which essentially raises the bottom of the container. Because a lot of plants really only need about, I don't know, six to eight, you know, inches of soil. Yeah. Uh, You know, I think that's genius. She said supportively. I, I'm a being as supportive as a 48-hour bra. <laughs> Aren't I? Like Rosalind Russell. Like Rosalind Russell's bra. That's right. Two people out there got that one. All right. Yeah. Uh, what, what else you got, Edith? I really kind of took a deep dive into seed catalogs. Like, you know, we talk about dreaming and looking at seed catalogs in the winter. And I thought, why... Why are they better than just going to the grocery store and going to the turnaround rack for seeds? Well, there's a couple of reasons there. It's really cool to go to use a seed catalog, whether it's online or whether it's in um, a book form, is that you can call them and they will answer all of your questions, especially if you call one who is in your vicinity, mm. in your same zone. Uh-huh. So, for example, today I called Botanical Interests in Broomfield. They were so helpful, Christy. I asked her a bunch of questions. She answered right away. They're on the phone all week long. And then I called Bounty Beyond Belief in Boulder. Again, on the phone, ready to answer questions. How great is that? What was the best advice you got today? Oh, this is cool. I said, what are greens that can be slow to bolt? And she said... Marvel of Four Seasons Lettuce, which I have the hundred heads of, and I just <laughs> burst out laughing. <laughs> you wish some of those would bolt. I do. And then she said, you can also do New Zealand spinach, which I have, Swiss chard, which I'm growing for the first time because of that letter we had. Mm-hmm. And on the Botanical Interest website, I was typing in red, and you know how it autofills? It said red warty thing warty like a wart oh and that's the name of a pumpkin seed oh i love it and i loved it so much so yeah and then a red leaf amaranth is a lettuce that also will resist bolting to the end i need some of those probably too late to plant them now though but maybe in the fall maybe in the fall but i mean very cool so folks see even if you don't buy their seeds Mm -hmm. call them yeah well on episode 31 on house plants i forgot to talk about 
um, how to propagate a Sansevierius because I was doing it at the time that we recorded that episode. And to remind folks that a Sansevierius is also known as a snake plant, also a mother-in-law tongue, but I don't like that name because I love my mother-in-law. She's awesome. So um, I have, uh, my cat was constantly knocking over my Sansevierius plant and parts of it were falling off and getting ripped off. And I was like, this is a bummer. And I just threw them in the compost pile. But then I found out this secret and I had a piece of broken Sansevierius. Did you know, Edith, that you can take a broken piece of Sansevierius and put it in a glass of water, a clean water, and it will take root? No, I did not. Mine did. Mine was in there for about four weeks. It started. I started to see little roots, and I planted it oh. in my Sansevierius, which you could see, which is right next to me, right behind me. It looks great. Now, when you say pure water, do you mean... Clean water. Chlorinated? I mean, clean water. Does it matter? It was from the sink. It was from the tap. Okay. Yeah. I got to thinking how I think when I was just starting out gardening, I'd see things in the garden that I, that were eating my plants and I would just kill them random, willy nilly kill. Well, some of them are larvae of really important things like ladybugs. So I thought I would include a description of things you should not kill. That are in your garden. For example, what is a what is a ladybug larvae look like? I have no idea. This is so cool. They're the inverse of a ladybug. They're black with orange spots. I don't think I've ever seen those. They're tiny. They look like little tiny worms. I call them spiny, tiny, and creepy. <laughs> you can find them on the underside of leaves. They feed on pollen. You can find them in your chives, dill, parsley, marigold, calendula, and cosmos, among other places. So if they're black with red spots, ladybug, don't kill them. Thanks, Edith. What about monarch butterfly? Monarch butterfly, you will find their larvae among milkweed. And th this is, they're very um, obvious. They're black, yellow, and white horizontal stripes. This is before they're a caterpillar. This is when they're a caterpillar. Oh, this gotcha. This is when they're a caterpillar. Oh, gotcha. Thank you for clearing that up. You know how I am. Um uh, the black swallowtail butterfly, which is so beautiful, we only have like one um, variety here, but in the south they have a lot more. Here's what they look like. They are black, yellow, and white, and green stripes, and they look like a caterpillar. It's important to know the difference between that and the, the horned tomato caterpillar, which we <laughs> yeah. hate. Yeah. He is all green. And he actually has horns. With weird-looking eyes. But they're little spots that look yes. like eyes. And he's huge. He's like, well, not like a man huge, <laughs> but four inches. They can get the four inches, and you got to pick them off and get them out of there. But So don't confuse them with the black swallowtail. Don't confuse them because the, 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 the small tomato hornworm can also get yellow to white in color with no markings, but the larger ones... They're the green ones, and they may also have V-shaped marks on the side. On episode 25, when we talked about winter sewing, and I mentioned all the different types of containers that you can winter sew in, like two-liter bottles or disposable food containers or deli containers, or my favorite, the milk jug, I forgot to mention Ziploc baggies. So if you don't have access to a lot of these items that I just mentioned, you can get some Ziploc baggies, cut a hole for drainage, fill it a third with soil, sprinkle your seeds on it, tamp it down, and put a clothespin on the edge so it stays open a little bit and zip up the rest and put it outside. Oh my gosh. Okay, so don't zip it all the way. Put a clothespin and that'll be enough and zip it up to the clothespin. Yeah. Oh, clever. And put it outside. That's great. Let's do it. I forgot to mention all the way back on episode two, Edith, when we were talking about water and mulching, which was the first two commandments of gardening, about soaker hoses. The advantage of a soaker hose is its ability to wet the soil evenly and slowly so no precious water is wasted by evaporation mm. and water is delivered directly to the roots. A soaker hose irrigation keeps the soil moist, but never waterlogged, and the foliage remains dry. Shout out to the word moist. 
<laughs> now, you may have to figure out after you water a couple times how long you should run a soaker hose, but you should run it until the soil is damp from 6 to 12 inches, depending upon the needs of the plant. Um, if you Traditionally, if you run the hose 100 minutes, depending upon where you are, you should get a half an inch of water. So an hour, over an hour and a half, you get a half an inch of mm -hmm. water. Okay. Don't bury your soaker hose. Okay. Let it be on top. Because if you bury it, it might get plugged up with the soil that's there. Mm. But you can put mm. it under a light mulch. Oh, very good. Oh, good. And you know what's even more interesting than all these tips, Edith, no. is that I still have three more that we don't have time for. Wow. Okay. So we'll guess we'll have to have another episode we'll have, mm -hmm. of things we forgot to tell you, including mm -hmm. the things we forgot to tell you during the things we forgot to tell you. <laughs> Very good, Christy. Hey, Edith, guess what time it is? What is it? It's mailbag. Ring, ring. This letter comes from Connie from Colorado. Okay, good. Hi, Connie. Christy and Edith, she says. I've waited too long to tell you, dot, 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 how much I love your podcast, your emails, and most of all, your sense of humor and wit, exclamation point, times three. You two are hilarious and informative. Thanks, Connie. Thank you. I am an earth mama with no green thumb. I live above 8,000 feet, so I can barely keep anything but an evergreen alive. The soil is rocks after three inches, and what color I try to put in the front yard, the chipmunks eat. So I really don't garden, but I love you two so much, I am a big fan of upside-down tulips. Maybe a show I'm planting in the mountains, entitled Rocky Mountain High, LOL. <laughs> Your titles kill. I hope this is becoming lucrative. I know it must be fun. You two rock. Best to you and yours. Hope is being planted, and I feel it growing. Connie. Oh, what a nice, wonderful. That's nice. You know, I got I got some uh, stuff for Connie because when I was looking up these seed companies, there's a couple of seed companies in Colorado that not only sell seeds, they breed seeds. They grow seeds specifically for high altitude. Mm. I'm going to tell Connie th what, what they are because that would be helpful to Connie. And right? to others, right? Yes, Connie can't be the only one on the planet. I would like to know. Oh, okay. Then I'll tell you. Okay. The there... suspense is killing me. <laughs> okay. Do it's... it. Okay. Oh, my God. The, st the high desert seeds in Montrose, Colorado, uh, as they breed their own seeds. And the woman that's doing it, she went to school in Colorado College and she studied. And so you can go there. She's also trying to make a quinoa seed that will grow here. How cool is that? Oh, that'd be amazing. And the other one is Pen and Cords Mountain Garden in West Cliff, Colorado. And they they have they do intensive gardening, biointensive gardening, where they try to get out of a quarter of an acre what other people get out of an acre. And they are at 8,120 feet. So call them and see if they can help you at all. And for if it's topsoil, only three inches, maybe she just needs to get uh, raised beds. That's a really good point, too. Yeah, fill, fill it up. Mm. Well, Connie, when it comes to chipmunks, chipmunks don't like plants that have a fragrant foliage or that have hairy leaves. So they don't like bee balm or cat mint or lavender. They stay away from foxglove also. And um, you may want to try instead, try bee balm, Purple Coneflower, Black-Eyed Susan, Spiderwort, Yarrow, Iris, Daffodils. And for annuals, try Zinnias or Cosmos, Petunia or Salvia. Chipmunks love seedlings of all kinds, so I would avoid all type of seedlings. And by that I mean consider getting larger plants so they've gone beyond the seedling stage. Uh -huh. Or be prepared to protect them. Good, good. Good, Christy. Also avoid daisies, coreopsis, pansies, mums, and columbine. And deadhead your flowers a lot. And another solution, another suggestion I'll give for um, mount, gardening in the mountains, Edith. Yeah. Is I purchased plants from High Country Gardens catalog. And they've been excellent plants. They're a little on the spendy side. So but you you're get have plants, plants from them. You get yeah. seedlings from them. Yes. So folks, if you've got gardening questions or successes or flops 
please send them to us. We love hearing from you. And we we read them on air and we love them so much. So you want to write to us, just do it at UpsideDownTulips at Gmail or at our website at UpsideDownTulips.com or check out the show notes. The music's here. It's that magic time for your weekly inspiration. And this one is from Joseph Campbell. The goal of life is to make your heartbeat match the beat of the universe, to match your nature with nature. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. That can be interpreted so many different ways. (laughs) I think it like everybody breathing together. Yes, and I see a big storm. (laughs) (laughs) Well, folks, that's another episode of Upside Down Tulips. Thanks so much for listening. We're Edith Weiss and Christy Munter Larson. And if you got some laughs and some value out of today, could you do us a favor? Please share the show with a friend who might also appreciate it. Thanks so much to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. If you want to hear more of Denise's music, go to denisegentilini.com or you can find that link at upsidedowntulips.com. And a special thanks to our local nursery and friend of the show, Southwest Gardens. Yay! Join us next week for vines. Like trumpet vine. Morning glory. Or veggies like peas. Cucumbers. Squash. Fruits like melons and grapes. And don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Upside down. Do you have any more strawberries? Yeah, I do, actually. There's some upstairs. (laughs)